you are such a, a fascinating presence in movies. Uh, and I, I'm wondering, can I ask you a few questions about your beginnings, and then we'll get into the the Circle of Eight project? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, First of all, thank you. I take that as a compliment. It, it very much is. I mean, there, there's there's very few people that are that are as as distinctive uh, as you are, and that's a terrific as, asset as an actor because you're so memorable and everything. You're from Tennessee, right? I am. I'm from a little town just outside of Nashville called Manchester. It's about 4,000 people. Like the, Our biggest industries are pajamas and um, caskets are made there. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So so what uh, drew you to acting? Were there inspirations for you? No, I just I think I always wanted to do it. Um, it's kind of hard. To, my, my father works at the casket factory. He still does. But he has my whole life. And I'm, I'm from a, a really blue-collar area, blue-collar family. And um, it's kind of hard to tell your parents that that's what you want for yourself. Um, but I, I went to college, and I, I majored in acting and um, in English because I thought I would go to law school if it, the acting thing didn't work out. And then um, I was doing a play in Nashville in community theater, and a, and a casting director approached me um, about auditioning for her. And I did, and I wound up – and I auditioned for Road Trip. was my third audition. I auditioned for a one-line part in that. And um, I wound up getting one of the leads. And and when when you're on a road trip, or were you? Did it feel like this was? A, I mean, I guess it's a big break just to get the job. But did you get a sense that it was a special project that would that would introduce you, as it did? Well, I mean, it was a huge deal for me because leads aren't ever cast on location. They cast them out of New York and L.A. Mm -hmm. um, and it almost never happened. And but I wasn't really aware of it. I was so green. And when I was doing the movie, I'd never had a job where I had... I'd done two things before that, like two tiny parts in movies. And um, I only had one line in both of them. And so I didn't really know what was happening. I didn't know what to expect. Um, it really didn't hit me um, until several months later. I'd come to L.A. to do some press for it. I was still living in Nashville at the time. And I'd come to L.A. and... Um, I was driving uh, down Sunset Boulevard uh, to NBC, and um, I saw my face on the side of a building, and uh, that was a, it was a huge shock. I pulled over, and I was just like, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I was just really freaked out, and um, and I think my first three years, I was just I was very reactive. I, I think I did like seven or eight movies back to back. Yeah. Um, I didn't really even get a sense of what I was doing until much later. I probably still don't exactly know what's happening. But tell me about your uh, what it does for you, what outlet it gives you acting. Well, I think that in real life I'm pretty non-emotional, pretty stoic. Um, I don't like to cry unless I'm getting paid to do it. Um, I think that for me it allows me to get out all my you know, my emotional side, so I'm not an angry man. Um, and it's a comfortable place for me. There's something about, when, if you turn a camera on me, I just have this thing in me that, that sort of goes on autopilot, I think. Um, I mean, I, I recently did the talk shows, and every time I do like the Tonight Show, for example, I freak out like an hour before. Okay, I'm, I don't know what I'm going to say. I, I, and right before the camera opens, I forget everything I'm supposed to talk about. Mm -hmm. And or right before the, the uh, curtain opens, the moment that curtain opens, something just takes over, and I don't know what it is, but I'm I'm, I'm comfortable. I know what's going on. I know what I'm going to say, and I think that may and, and plus I can't. I know I can't do anything else. Like I have to succeed as an actor. No one else is going to hire me, especially after all the shit I've done on film. Right. Uh, I think that I've I sort of boxed myself in a little bit. Well, I, I understand completely what you're saying. It, it's like you, your body is so in, in tune with itself and so relaxed the second that camera comes on. It's uh, in real life, I'm kind of a wreck. Like I'm nervous and and socially awkward. But the moment the camera comes on, I feel I, I never feel more at home than I do on a set. Mm, that's terrific. T tell me about tell me about the set, and and particularly when you're when you're working with a group of people. I mean, you look at a lot of these great movies that you made, like Road Trip and The New Guy and Hustle and Flow. I mean, that's a that's a time vault movie right there. Thank uh, you. 
tell me about those relationships you you make on that set and and then it's it's over is that difficult for you yeah i mean the relationships are formed hard and fast like you become really really close to people i mean and not just the actors but the crew and you may never see them again i think from i've done i think 25 movies now and I've walked away with probably four friendships um, that, I, that I maintain. Because, I mean, and it's not for lack of trying. It's that, it's like, you'll be in, in L.A. when your friend is working or, you know, you, you miss each other. Because I think out of all the things I've done, I've probably worked in L.A. maybe five times. I mean, I live here now, but um, it's, it's like you're never in the same place as, as your fellow actor or or a crew member, and so those, those relationships are really hard to maintain. When you see them again, it's like, you know, you pick up where you left off, but for the most part, they, don't, they aren't people who are active in your life. And, that's, and, and normally when I wrap a film, I'll have about two weeks where I get really sad. Mm-hmm. Because you'll never have, it's a special environment where you'll never have that group of people together again. It can't ever happen again. Yeah. With with uh, television, because I know you do television as well sporadically throughout your career. Is it a different process from film at all for you? Absolutely, and I don't like it as much. Um, TV is way faster. I mean, even when you're doing an independent film, I shot a movie in 12 days um, that's actually festival and now. Um, and, um, and that was really fast. I was doing 14 pages of dialogue a day. That is not even as fast as the pace of television. And television also... When you when you come into it, when you guest on the show, it's, it's, television is like a factory. These people know each other. They work together every day. They ignore each other. Um, for the most part, I would think television actors aren't necessarily friends because they see each other so much. Um, people just th- there doesn't seem to be the excitement that happens on a film, and I really miss that when I do a TV show. Yeah. And it feels and it like, makes me not want to be a regular on a show because I don't think I, I have that in me. Well, the, to do guest spots on shows too, I mean, the the word says it all. It feels like you're, I would imagine, a guest in someone else's house in a way. You are a visitor. <laughs> I did several episodes of a TV show in '07, and it was made very clear to me by one of the actors um, as he told me that I was not welcome. Hmm. And that, that's a tough thing because I had some pretty intimate scenes with this person, and um, and this person was not having it. I, I think that they didn't like that I would I was given so much material, and and I, I wasn't comfortable. And when my run ended, I was really happy that so didn't have to return. Do, do you find that uh, across the board, though, generally actors are generous or is is a competition uh, uh is that common in them no i think that most of my experiences have been the opposite actors are really generous especially the more successful actors um it's really interesting because the most the most problems i've ever had with actors are actors who aren't successful or who are trying and are sort of on their way up mm-hmm. um but people i mean when i've worked with you know i've worked with renee russo and um, Hilary Swank, Aaron Eckhart, uh, Alfred Woodard, I've worked with Stanley Tucci, I worked with twice. Um, mm-hmm. These are really generous, great people. And Alfred Carter Woodard so I, is one of the relationships that I actually have been able to maintain. We did the core together, I think, in 03. And she lives down the street from me, and I see her probably as much as I do anyone. I think that's part of what makes them so great, is that they're so generous. I mean, there's a reason why they are where they are. Yeah. There's something that absolutely translates behind the eyes, like if you are not a good person or if you're not comfortable with yourself, it's sort of, there's a reason why these people keep working, and I think it's because there's something in them that yeah. draws you to them. Sandra Bullock is, is another example. We did a movie together, and the movie didn't, wasn't successful. It didn't go well for her, but she, um, she is one of the most generous people I've ever met mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In, in any profession. She's just, she's herself, and there's something that's infectious about her, and almost like you can't help but like her. Yeah, yeah. I, I get that completely. Um, Circle of Eight. I suppose we should talk about Circle of Eight. <laughs> yeah, I think they want me to talk about that. Uh, so tell me what attracted you to this project. It's, it's a unique project. It's a first in many respects. It's the first of its kind. It's the highest quality, probably most expensive thing ever created 
for the web. And what attracted me to it, um, and well, initially when it was sent to me, my representation said, no, you should not do this. But the casting director, April Webster, is a friend of mine. She cast me on Lost and I think Criminal Minds and a couple of other things I've done. Um, and I, I just like her a lot. She has really good taste. Um, and I read it, and um, I'm starting to produce. Uh, I've produced a couple of things. I'm, I have a couple of things in the pot, pipeline that I'm going to produce. And the way that I've learned to do that is to be on a set and watch producers. Well, I wanted to see if web content varied from that formula that you use in a movie. And it does in a lot of respects. I mean, we shot this movie single camera like we do um, an actual, like, theatrical movie. Um, but the marketing behind it is completely different. And it, it's much more hands-on. It's much more calculated. And even before you shoot a web series that have marketing in mind. Because basically how the web works now and how content works for the web is that it's, it's, aver it's driven by advertising because it's free. Right, so right. that advertiser wants to know that the money they're plowing into this is going to be rewarded by with some sort of really genius marketing. And this is an interactive uh, series too, isn't it? Yeah. It's, um, the, the movie is broken down into 10 six-minute episodes three of which will premiere on MySpace on the 27th, which I think is tomorrow. But if this tomorrow. runs tomorrow, it will be today. Um, so tonight. Um, and, um, the, um, what's, and what's great about this is that the entire thing is interactive. Um, it's, and then at the end of the 10 episodes, the audience will decide the fate of the eight people who are in the script or in the movie. Um, Basically, what the story is, is that there are eight people who live in this building, and one of them, um, and they've been living the same day over and over and over again, probably thousands of times. And it's like a Groundhog Day thing. And the only thing that ever survives from this day is their memory of what happened and, and a videotape that I make every day. I, I document everything that happens that day. And basically, there's one cast member who makes a fatal decision every time that causes us all to die. And so basically we're already dead. At the end of this at the beginning of this day we know that we're gonna die at the end of it. And so through these thousands of days that we've lived, um, we come to realize like if we do this, she's gonna make this decision. If we do this, she's gonna do that. And so we've got it down to a science and we're all trying to convince her through different devices to go in a certain direction to save us all. Mm. And the audience ultimately will make the choice for us. That's what fascinates me about it, it, it because when you when when movie geeks like me hear hear about uh things moving to the web, uh movies making their way to different devices and things, in one sense it's exciting, it's evolving and I'm sure it presents more opportunities for for people in the industry too to work. So that's great, but then you start to wonder is it going to is this going to start a trend that will endanger actual theatrical going? And that's such an interactive experience when you go to the theater. But this is right. interactive in a whole different way. I mean, you're probably going to reach many more millions than you would at a multiplex with this. Yeah, absolutely, and, because I think MySpace has 170 million people, and this is free content. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's a bit like a TV show that you can watch anytime you want and is available to you um, for free on your computer. Um, the drawbacks of that are that these things are done with an actor contract, which is not designed to benefit actors or filmmakers. Okay. It's designed to benefit the studios. I mean, I will say this about Paramount Digital, who produced this, and the producers behind it. Um, they w they didn't they didn't treat us as badly as they could have. Mm -hmm. They went to every effort to make sure that we were you know, rested and taken care of. But the, the basic contracts for these things are terrible for everybody, except the advertiser. Right. And I think that is what the real danger to the movie industry, is the fact that it can be done so cheaply and could be so potentially profitable. So when, you, when you're weighing it, do you think it's a positive? Because it's definitely going to be a trend. I mean, it, uh, the, the the Internet and digital media, I mean, it's here. <laughs> uh, do you right. think that trend is... A positive? Do you think it will evolve, evolve into something more positive in the future? Well, I think that as it gets stronger, the unions will have more um, leverage to negotiate contracts, like once more content is, is, put, is put out. 
Um, I think the benefit of it is that it gives younger actors a platform, more less experienced or less successful actors, a platform to have a job um, because they can be hired relatively cheaply. They get, you know, to perform. They get to be seen. It's immediate. I mean, when you do a film, like, it could be a year, year and a half before it sees a lot of day, if it ever does. Right. Right. But this is a guarantee. If you shoot something for the web, it's more than likely going to be seen by someone. Yeah. And that, that's great exposure and great opportunity for for young up and coming actors. The the bad thing about that for them is that they don't have any leverage to coming in to to negotiate. They can't really. I, I, they, they were nice. The producers were nice to me, but. I had you know, I had ten years worth of jobs behind me, so mm-hmm. it's sort of like I was in a good position coming into this. But 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 that said, looking at movies like Road Trip, which I got paid very little to do, I was paying my dues. Um, I would looking back, I would have done that movie for free. I would have paid to have done it because it 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 gave me pretty much every job that I had because I hadn't done anything. I, yeah, and I, I I agree with everything that you're saying about it. it's going to be really interesting to watch, and we will drive all of our listeners to the website so they can view it themselves. Absolutely, uh, I'm really proud of it. I think that it's it's really really high quality. I mean, not even just for a web uh, show. It's it's beautifully shot. It's very Lynchian. The color the coloring is beautiful. Um, it, it, it's a, it's a movie, and and after the um, after it has its run on the web. It will be released as a, a full-length movie um, at Blockbuster. A full, it'll be R-rated. Well, and I think that that's probably the major misconception when someone hears a, a, a web a web uh, series or a web film. They don't think it's an actual film, and, and it's obvious just from seeing the trailer alone. This this is an, this is a really top-notch, uh, high gloss. Uh, it's a film. You know? Yeah, a lot of work went into this. Um, I mean, just as much as any mo- any movie that was sort of made for theatrical release at this bu- at this price point, I've ever done. It didn't feel extremely low budget. It didn't feel it didn't feel like something we were doing for the web. It felt like an actual movie, and it looked yeah. like that. Before I let you go, could I ask you uh, what's what's coming up for you? I see a couple of movies coming up for you. Yeah, I have a movie that that's actually festivaling right now that I produced and starred in called Last Day of Summer. Mm-hmm. Um, I did with Nikki Reed from Twilight, um, and it's I'm really really proud of that. Uh, we just debuted at the Hollywood Film Festival, and um, hopefully you'll see that soon. And I'm going to the Philippines in um, after the first of the year to star in John Sayles' next movie. Oh. Um, I know I could wow. not believe it. <laughs> it was so good. I, they asked me to come in and read, and I'm not the best auditioner to begin with. And also, the script was so good, and it was John Sales. I was like, there's no way they're going to hire me for this. So I canceled the meeting. I was like, I didn't even want to go in, and they were like, you really should. And so I did, and the next day I got called, and and I got the part, and that also never happens. You never find out the next day. And it's um, it's a really it's beautifully written. He wrote it. He's directing it. Uh, Chris Cooper is also in it. Oh. Um, and it's about um, when we invaded the Philippines around the turn of the century. Um, and sort of, it was our first Vietnam. It was a war that we got in that we didn't know how to get out of. Right. And um, it's, it's you know, I'm super excited. You should be. I mean, I, I would. I mean, you're fantastic, and his movie can only benefit from your participation. But we've talked to John Sales on the show before. A really great guy. But the thing that impresses me most about him is his determination and his passion, because he still has to fight for every movie that he makes, and he's so undeterred, and he has this passion. I think he's probably an actor's best friend. So, I, I, I mean, he's one about. of the fathers, thank you, he's one of the fathers of American independent film. Yeah. Um, he, I mean, like, when I look at his work, I'm in awe, and the fact that he has to fight still to get $2 million or $3 million to do a movie is ludicrous. Yes, yeah. I, I see young filmmakers that have terrible scripts all the time with that kind of money. And, and I want to know how they got it, and John Sales has a problem getting that kind of money. It's criminal. It's disgusting, yeah. And, and time and time again, we talk to people. Paul Schrader had the same story. He said, you know, I, I fight tooth and nail to get to get a little bit of money to make my movies. Paul Schrader and John Sales, what's going on? I know. And, and it, yeah, it's, it's crazy. But 
but that's a great project. I wish you the best of luck with it. Thank you so much. I'm over the moon about it. I, I can really cannot wait for this experience. I can imagine. Well, come back uh, uh, w- when uh, when that comes to fruition, or come back to discuss any project you'd like, uh, because we'd love to have you. I've really enjoyed this. Well, thank you so much. I had a good time as well.